Hello friends, today's question, two point masses M1 and M2 are connected by a spring of natural length L0. The spring is compressed such that two point masses touch each other and then they are fastened by a string. Then the system is moved with a velocity V0 along the positive x axis. When the system reaches the origin, the string breaks that is at t is equal to 0. The position of the point mass m1 is given by x1 by this equation where a and omega are the constant. Find the position of second block as a function of time. Also find the relation between a and l0. So it is said that there are two point masses m1 and m2 and they are connected by the spring which is having a natural length l0 and uh, later on they are can see the string is compressed and they are fastened by a string so in this case there is no external force acting in the system so we can use the conservation momentum so we can say There is no external force acting on the system. Therefore, by conservation of momentum. We, write, we can write the equation as before the string breaks before the string breaks its momentum and is equal to after the String breaks its momentum. So before the string breaks, the masses m1 and m2 are traveling with same velocity v0. You can say m1 plus m2 v0 will be equal to m1 v1 plus m2 v2, where m1 is moving with the velocity of v1 moving with velocity v1 and m2 is moving with velocity of v2 from here we can find out our v2 so we can see v2 will be equal to m1 plus m2 v0 minus m1 v1 and divided by m2 now it is also given that the position of point mass m1 is given by the equation x1 is equal to v0 we can say for mass m1 x1 is equal to v0 t minus a 1 minus cos omega t so we can find out its velocity by derivating this equation so you can see v1 will equal to derivative of x1 with respect to time so this will be giving us v0 minus a omega and this will be sine of omega t let us call this equation number one and this is equation number two so substituting the value of v1 from equation two in equation one you can say using equation two 
in equation 1 we get you can say v2 is equal to m1 plus m2 times v0 minus m1 this is v0 minus a omega sin omega t and divided by m2 now we open the bracket so we can say that v2 will be equal to m1 plus sorry v2 is equal to m1 v0 plus m2 v0 and this will be minus m1 v0 plus m1 a omega sin omega t divided by m2 here in this will be v0 so m1 v0 m1 v0 cancels out so we can write that v2 is equal to v0 plus m1 m2 a omega sin omega t so this is the velocity of a mass m2 at certain time t you can say this is the velocity of mass m2 at time t and we are supposed to find out the position of it means we are supposed to find out if x2 is the position of mass m2 at time t so you can see if x2 is the position of mass m2 at time t therefore we can integrate this equation and we have to, we can try to solve it so we can say v2 will be equal to derivative of x2 which will be giving us v0 plus m1 upon m2 a omega sin omega t we can just solve it further we get dx2 is equal to v0 plus m1 m2 a omega sin omega t and this is derivative of t now it is given that the string is cut at the position at the origin rather so it means we are going to integrate this equation from 0 to x2 dx2 and this will be from 0 to t v0 m1 by m2 a omega sin omega t derivative of t so on the left side we get it as x2 is equal to on the right side you can say this will be v0 t plus m1 m2 this we are going to get a omega and we get this as minus cos omega t divided by omega 0 to t omega and omega cancels out so we get this as x2 is equal to omega naught t minus m1 m2 and a cos omega t this is upper limit and lower limit will be our minus this will be zero and this will be minus of a m1 m2 cos 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 zero is one 
therefore we can say our x2 is equal to u naught t minus or we can take it as common plus m1 m2 a and we get this as 1 minus cos of omega t so this is our part first this is the equation is the equation for position of mass m2 in terms of time completes the first part and in the second part we are supposed to find out also find the relationship between a and l naught so part b so in order to find out the relation between a and l naught so you can say as soon as the spring is cut the both uh, masses m1 and m2 will try to move towards the extreme position so you can say after the string is cut masses m1 and m2 will move towards their extreme position and at the maximum length of their uh, we can say at the maximum natural length of spring extreme position that is its natural length of the natural length of spring which is given as L naught and at that this particular uh, you can say this particular position the acceleration of the both the blocks will be equal to zero at this particular position the acceleration of m1 and m2 will be zero which basically means that if this is our m1 and this is our m2 and this is the natural length of the spring so at this uh, at this particular moment the position of m1 is given as x1 and the position of m2 is given as x2 and they are moving only in x direction so this is our x direction and this is our y direction and this can be in positive side also or as well positive negative side also that doesn't matter because the length of the spring will be always the difference between the x2 coordinate as well as x1 coordinate And from here we can also say that the only force acting on M1 and M2 will be 
due to spin and in this case we say that m1 is having acceleration of a1 and m2 is having acceleration of a2 and at this particular moment a1 will be also equal to 0 and a2 will be also equal to 0 when the length of the spring is L0. Zero, which implies that A1 will be equal to 0 and A2 is also equal to 0. So here at this particular moment, the only force acting on the uh, M1 and M2 will be due to spin and for acceleration to be zero this spring force should be also equal to zero the only force acting on the spring m1 and will be due to spring and at this position the force due to spring will be 0 for acceleration to be equal to 0 for acceleration by acceleration I mean both a1 and a2 to be 0 now we already know the equation for v1 which is given to us or rather we can say v1 we calculated our equation number 2 so we can say v1 is equal to v0 minus a omega sin omega t from here we can calculate acceleration we can say our a1 is equal to derivative of v1 which will be equal to minus a omega square cos of omega t and for a1 will equal to 0 for a1 is equal to 0 you can say cos of omega t should be equal to 0 and under this condition for a1 equal to cos omega t is equal to 0 And we can also say that over x1 when cos omega t is equal to 0 we can say over x1 which is given as v0 t minus a1 minus cos omega t so x1 at cos omega t is equal to 0 will be equal to omega naught t minus a next similarly we can solve it for v2 also v2 we already calculated and v2 is our v naught plus m1 m2 a omega sin omega t we can say v2 is equal to v0 plus m1 m2 a omega sin omega t we can calculate its acceleration a2 is equal to derivative of v2 and this comes as m1 m2 a omega square cos of omega t and once again for a2 is equal to 0 cos of omega t should be equal to 0 and we already know the equation for x2 right here x2 is given as v0 t plus m1 m2 times a 1 minus cos omega t or we can say x2 at cos of omega t equal to 0 
will be equal to v naught t plus m1 m2 divided by a multiply by a this is the value of x2 when cos of omega t is equal to 0 or means when there is a full length l naught therefore we can also say that for natural length l naught x2 minus x1 when cos of omega t equals 0 is equal to l naught we substitute the value of x2 and x1 so x2 is our v naught t plus m1 m2 times a minus x1 we get it as v naught t minus a v naught t minus a is equal to l naught now it is simple calculation now v naught t plus m1 m2 a minus v naught t plus a is equal to l naught and this cancels out a we can take common so a we get this as m1 by m2 plus 1 is equal to l naught we can say this as a m1 plus m2 divided by m2 a is equal to l naught and finally you can say a is equal to m2 l naught m1 plus m2 so this is the relationship between the natural length l naught and a this is the relation between l naught and a so this completes the question thank you